How you doing, Woodworker? Today, we're gonna to do a grand tour of my woodworking shop here at 731 Woodworks. We're in a two car garage, it's about a 21 by 20, give or take. So uh, it's a nice space for me to operate in. And I think it's a perfect size. Of course, we're always running out of room in our shops, but hey, that's part of it. I'm very blessed and thankful to have this space to work in. Let me show you around. Keep in mind, a lot of the tools and shelves, things like that, you see there's videos on those that I've done previously. You can go check out, I'll link them in the description below, as well as my old shop tour video. It's a 2018 video, it's the last one I did. I told you I was gonna do uh, them annually and I failed you and I didn't do that. So this is in the, from 2018 to now, you'll see a giant difference in the shop. I encourage you to go watch that. I think you'll be surprised at how much things can progress in about two and a half, three years. So starting off, if you come in the shop on your right hand side or the north side of the wall here, we've got the miter stand. If you Google her tool belt miter station, you'll see that this is based on that design. It's not the exact design, but it's based on that. 42 inches high is what I built this one. All right, one thing I wanna mention on this uh, miter station, I love the fact that I made it taller at that 42 inch height because now everything is just above waist high when I'm working here at the miter uh, saw. And so it makes it very convenient, especially the older I get, I have to get closer to things to see them. So that makes it excellent. I don't have to get right there on it now. Cause when it was down, the first one I had was just on top of this toolbox actually. And I would have to bend down and see my lines, my cut lines, things like that. So this makes it a whole lot more convenient. I do like that it has these little cubbies here. I keep my squares and things in this cubby. And then in this cubby, I usually keep a tape measure or something. Right now I have a pull saw that Comellon sent me to try out. So this miter station is 24 inches deep. Again, 42 inches tall, 10 and a half foot long. So if I'm being honest with you, I started making a video on this miter station back when I built it a couple of years ago, but it was so wompy jawed and jacked up, I scrapped the whole video because I was, I was just one of those days, nothing would come together right. As you can see, I actually made this in an inch and a half too short, and I wound up having to put two pieces of plywood there, plus a strip up top to fix it. And it's pretty embarrassing, but hey, it happens to all of us, right? And then if we go to the other end, I actually made this piece, after I made that piece an inch and a half too short, I come down here and done the, almost the exact same thing and made it three quarters of an inch too short. And so you see that it has a piece right there to catch it. And so it is not without its faults. What you gonna do, you know? It was so jacked up and I was so frustrated with it uh, by the time I was able to get everything kind of pieced together that I just scrapped the whole video and that's one that never made YouTube. I guess what I'm getting at is, let's do a power tip. You know what time it is, power tip time. So the power tip is everybody makes mistakes, everybody. Don't worry about it. Uh, like I said, this, this miter station is far from perfect but it's been extremely functional for me. So if you're worried about something not coming together right, something looking a little jacked up, it's okay, we all make them, don't worry about it. On the right side of the miter station, you see I've just built some simple pull-out drawers here. So these are just rigid small parts organizers. I got those at Home Depot. I think they were like 20, $25 a piece. I went ahead, I bought three of them actually, and I actually only needed two because I already had this one up here, which is a Stanley Fat Max brand. But up here I keep my screws, pocket hole plugs and things like that. My pocket hole screws go in there. And then this is just random parts, some extra screws also and some electrical cable hangers, odds and ends, washers, nuts, things like that. Then on this side, I keep uh, some also some more pocket hole screws over here, but as well, I've got some router bits. This is where I keep my router bits and my Forstner bits, things like that. And then also my brad nails go in a couple of these bins, washers, nuts, and some more spare parts. Can never have too many spare parts. These drawers here, I keep some spare blades in here and then some other odds and ends. I don't even know why I have those DeWalt gloves, but they're in there. And these are just, uh, they're sliding on wood on wood. There's no drawer slides or anything on these two uh, drawers up here. And these actually have the ball bearing slides on them. So they slide really smooth. And I didn't really care to mount these so I can actually pull them out. An open storage area there if I so chose. Just a little bit for like pens, pencils, squares, things like that. Of course, on top here, you see my Craig K5. I actually have a Craig 720 on the way that someone has donated to the channel. And you guys are so generous to me and I very much appreciate it. This is where I keep my Craig K5 here. I got some storage boxes over in the back for shipping. 
And these are just Walmart uh, flat, large storage boxes. Be able to package up flags and stove covers, things like that to ship. And of course, if you've been following the channel at all, you know that this Delta Cruiser was given to me by Delta. And I did a review on this just a few weeks back if you want to go check that out. This is a really nice saw. Like I said, the only drawback I had during the review was the dust collection. Everything else about the saw is fantastic. So this is where we keep it. Directly under this miter saw, I have this Craftsman Toolbox. It's a very cheap, very old toolbox. I've had it for probably 15 years or so. These are junk drawers. I know you guys have junk drawers just like I have them. And I have a few of them around. And so mostly they're junk in here. Uh, stuff that I wanted to keep, didn't want to get away, give away. Uh, stuff like this, I use this as a little jig to inset things three quarters of an inch. My RZ mass is in here, some uh, wrenches. Uh, more junk. And more junk. Pretty much this is where I keep my junk. This plate was sent to me, it's a Maine State Police license plate. It was sent to me by a trooper in Maine, and I really appreciate that. And then that's the 70 or 85th anniversary plate that you could buy at the State Police Association. Uh, in Little Rock. Looking at the flags on the wall, this one right here was sent to me by Jeremy at Twisted Oaks Flag Company. I've got a video on that flag. Dude is super talented. That flag I built based on some of the designs that I've already made on the channel. Again, link in the description below to those flag builds. Now, keep it on the miter station. This is just a pull out drawer. It's actually on wood slides. I just took a three quarter by three quarter piece of wood and nailed it to the miter station. And then two three quarter by three quarter pieces on the drawer. Just makes a very simple drawer. Uh, to slide in and out. I like to keep my screwdrivers here. I've got some holes drilled so that they just sit right in there. Very easy access, uh, extra spare tape measure, a uh, co-melon, my favorite brand of tape measure. And then of course the uh, little uh, Tech Life or Wixie makes a good one. Digital angle finder. These are fantastic for setting your blade uh, angles and making sure it's exactly 90 degrees. I, I highly recommend these. Link in the description if you want one. And then I got an extension cord down there I keep rolled up. This is a DeWalt dust extractor. So I actually won this in a contest on Instagram very early on when I started woodworking from Tools by Design on Instagram. You can go check him out. He's got a fantastic page, does a bunch of tool reviews, things like that. This dust extractor is uh, connects directly to my DeWalt five inch orbital sander. This thing really works well to pull in the fine dust. And that's why I don't have a whole lot of very fine dust in the shop. This actually does a really good job of pulling that in and getting it in here. It has a self cleaning feature where it vibrates every so many seconds. And then here I just got some more storage areas. My intention was to make drawers for that and I just never got around to it. The old 10 inch wind drill press. Really like this thing. I did a review on this as well, uh, or an unboxing and review. This thing works really well for the price. Uh, it's, a, it's a tiny bit underpowered if we're being honest. Uh, I wish it had just a little more oof, because it'll, it'll stop on you and kind of get bound, not really bound up, but it just won't power through if you pressure down on it. You just gotta take things real slow, have a sharp bit, it'll work just fine. I would not buy it without the table. This table has been invaluable. A couple of upgrades that I've done in here since I moved into the garage. When I moved into the garage, there was one electrical outlet on the north wall, and there was one in the ceiling. The one in the ceiling was fairly useless. I could have got one of those retractable cords, but I never did. Now, one of the main things that I did do though was I had an electrician come in and install three more outlets for me so that I wouldn't be so limited on electrical in the shop. So now I've got the one in the ceiling that controls the lights. If you go back and watch that light video, I've got a smart plug up there so I can just tell uh, the Amazon assistant uh, to turn my lights on and she does that. She, it, it does that. Having those three now has been huge and they're all on different circuits. So I don't trip breakers, things like that. Before we get over to the storage shelves, this is my flooring. These are four foot by six foot horse stall mats. You buy them at any tractor supply store. They're about three quarters inch thick rubber. These make a huge difference. I bought them for the gym before I was working out. I could do things on the floor, you know, sit ups and uh, drop my weights, things like that. It wouldn't damage my floor, make a lot of noise. So that's why they were purchased. However, as a flooring for a woodworking shop, these are excellent because if you've seen those anti-fatigue mats, uh, if, you, if you work in a, on concrete surface for very long standing, you know that your back, your feet, your legs start really aching after a while, especially if you get old and bald like me. These are fantastic because they don't squish. You don't feel the squish when you walk on them, but they do absorb a lot of that impact. And while you're standing on it, I don't get that 
aching back and aching legs, even if I'm out here for hours at a time working. I just use Gorilla Tape to tape the seams of this horse stall mats together. If you're wondering how my shop is so well lit and my head is always so shiny, it's because of these lights. So these lights are daisy chained together, which means they just plug into each other and one of them plugs into a plug and the rest of them connect to each other. These things are fantastic lights. I've got a review and an install video on how to put these up. Very simple and they will add a ton of light to your, your woodworking shop. And that's why the lighting in here is so much better than it used to be. If you go back and look at some of the older videos, these are excellent LED lights, excellent. And then I've got uh, two screw-in lights. See those, tri those three winged lights there? They're like $15, $20 a piece. A link, to the description, link in the description below to both of those sets of lights. They make a huge difference when you're out here working, especially at night or low light. This is my assembly table. This is where you see me doing all of my putting together of my stuff and my projects and things. I wanna build a bigger one of these. That's one of my main goals for 2021 is to build a bigger, more functional assembly table. Uh, this one is three or three foot wide by five foot long. I want one that is at a minimum four foot by eight foot, which would be a full sheet of plywood with drawers and storage and things like that underneath built in. And also that it's mobile because that's a very important to me that this thing have casters on it that I can move it out of the way or reposition if I so choose because sometimes I change my mind and I want to move things around a little bit. Not very often, but sometimes. Of course, you can see the casters on this one. I've got a video on those if you want to check that out. This is a very simple construction, just two befores, plywood, that's it. You can see this is the top to that old uh, junky craftsman over there. Uh, the reason I say that these things aren't that great is when you pull the drawers out, they're really flimsy. They don't roll very well. I don't really care for them that much. Got my mallets and hammers sorted under there, a ball peen and a mallet. Sometimes you just gotta hit stuff. Of course, up here I keep my drill bits in this and extra sawdust in case I need it later. This side I keep my Allen wrenches and my uh, utility knives and the Craig R3s in there as well as some more sawdust just in case. In here I keep random stuff. I don't really use this. It's there. It's got stuff in it. I couldn't tell you what it was. Got some old crappy chisels. That's one thing I need to do, invest in is some very good chisels. Uh, I really do need to invest in those. Hey, been looking for that. Uh, some extra pliers, things like that. Some more pliers. Then in the bottom, I got some drivers, uh, bits, and then random junk and more sawdust. To come around to the other side, I've got a top to a red box that's in the storage shed out back. I just don't need it in here, so it's empty and I don't use it. This one is the same, it's still a Craftsman. Uh, these drawers are not great. All this stuff's inherited from my father-in-law in this uh, toolbox. So I've got some sockets, uh, some small wrenches, extra sawdust. Again, you can never have too much of that. Uh, all sorts of screwdrivers over here. Again, more sawdust. Ratchets, a few wrenches, some more pliers and extra sawdust. Uh, a vise, some zip ties and then the big wrenches, and then just a tiny bit of sawdust in there. But mostly the big wrenches stay down there. And then a little shop hammer, just in case you need to hit something big. This is the southwest corner of the shop. This is where I keep my paints and stains, as well as everything else gets kind of jammed in there. This is the rigid shop vac. This is what I use for dust collection right now. So far, this rigid shop vac has done me very, very well. I just suck up all the dust that I need. It hooks to my table saw. I can hook it to my miter saw if I so choose. It's a 14 gallon shop vac. It works well. Uh, like I said, when it gets full, I just empty it out. Also over here, I made this rolling cart. So I initially made this rolling cart as a planer stand only. I planned on storing some extra tools underneath it like is in there now, uh, some lesser used tools. Uh, but now that I've got the jointer, I've got it on there as well. And they barely fit on there, as you can see. So. Another project goal for 2021 is to build a dual function planer jointer stand with some extra storage underneath storage. That's the big, gonna be the big keyword for 2021 is storage. I've got videos on both the jointer and the planer as well as that rolling tool cart, if you wanna check that out. That rolling tool cart's a very simple build, but it is so, so functional. So on the bottom of this tool cart, I've got this, this is a very old Craftsman, uh, grinder and wire wheels. If you watch the dog kennel video, that's what I used to knock the rust off the rebar before I painted it. 
I've got this old Hitachi belt sander. I rarely use it because it seems to cause more damage for me than I actually uh, good. So I don't hardly ever use that. Got my old first router that I had. I've since dropped it and broke the shoe on it. So it just lives under there. And then I've got an old grinder and the heat gun there that you saw in the epoxy video. This is a wind planer that I bought. Uh, it's a hand planer, electric planer. Again, I couldn't make this work for me other than creating a giant mess. So I never use it, but it's there. So this is the southwest corner, south, southwest, southwest corner of the shop. I had this husky shelf that I bought a year or two ago. Uh, these are really, really nice shelves. Uh, I've done a video on these as well. Uh, these are these are excellent for storage as well as wood storage, and then of course paint stains, things like that. And that's what I use this specific one for. So on the bottom shelf, I got a little bit of extra lumber storage down here. Some of this is hardwoods, a piece of plywood or two down there and then some old tile that we kept for who knows why. And then we've got some paints and stains there, or paints on the second shelf. And then in this, inside this box is where I keep my shop rags so that they don't get dusty. I use those for stains and waxing and all sorts of things. On this third shelf here, we've got a couple of more boxes. This one's actually empty. And then the one in the back, I keep some paint or some packing tape in. Uh, of course, we've got that old virtual fist pump sign there then i got my spray paints here and then my stains and finishes on this side over here and then on the top shelf i've got other another box with some paint rollers uh, uh rotary tools up there actually and then also my home right paint sprayer is also up there on the floor i got a shop stool that i built a long time ago and i don't have a video on that i just threw it together to see if i could do it and it's still here have a fan for the summertime because that's my air conditioner in the summer and then underneath there is our champion generator my generator just in case we lose power this is really my main working shelf uh, i call it my i don't really call it anything it's just a shelf that i work off of most but this is where i keep all of my power tools or my hand tools hand tools cordless tools this is where i keep all my cordless tools such as my drill my drill a cordless router brad nailer all that good stuff circular saw i even got my tendon and jig here some squares, uh, hang my clamps on this. This thing works great. It's another one of those Husky shelves, man. This thing is just a, it's a very multifunctional shelf. I really like them. They're extremely sturdy. I mean, you can rock them if you want, but I mean, I've never had any issues at all with them. And I keep my clamps hung on there. It's a good place to keep them out of the way. Starting on top, I've just got a generator cable. that gives me some extra plugs if I'm using my generator. That old box come out of my great uncle's uh, shed. I didn't want to throw that away. It's very cool. And then my hedge trimmers. <laughs> some packing materials here. Uh, the old drills, the two drills that I started with, I keep those around, an extra extension cord and then an extra hose for the dust extractor. Uh, if we're going down to the second shelf, we got my DeWalt miter saw. It's not for sale. I want to keep it. I'm actually probably fixing to swap it back out for the Delta and use it for a while because it's sentimental to me, man. It's the first one. I really like it. Got my temperature because I need to know how hot or cold I am. Craig parts and pieces, drawer slide jig, things like that in those boxes. Leaf blower. That's how I clean out the fine dust. If you've seen the cleanup video, of course, my clamps. I don't have a whole lot of clamps to be a woodworker, actually. I do want to pick up some parallel clamps because honestly, I don't have enough clamps. And I know woodworkers always say they don't have enough, but I really don't. This is all I've got. Uh, so these are Irwin and some Harbor Freight clamps. These are Walmart clip quick clamps. Those are Harbor Freight uh, 60 inch clamps. Uh, 36 inch, 60 inch is all I got there. Then I had a good friend of mine send me some Jorgensen clamps uh, just to see if I liked them. Those are nice. Those are the newest ones I've got and they're small, but I do need to get some parallel clamps because I need them. On the third shelf here is where I keep all of my tools and some sandpaper, 80 and 120 is really all I ever use. I've got some other stuff over in that dust extractor. My bench cookies are in there, my CA glue's in there, uh, my feather board. It's kind of a catch all tray here. Uh, I was sent this used Porter cable this used Porter Cable Circular Saw with two batteries. Thank you. Uh, I've got uh, a Bosch sander in there. This Bosch jigsaw, my nail gun, my router, my drill, my impact. And then I was given this very awesome 20 volt max DeWalt XR drill, but I don't have a battery for it yet. I gotta buy or get a battery. Then I've got a driver kit down there that I picked up a while back. I keep my straight edge back here so it's nice and flat and doesn't get bent up. Got another level. My Craig rip cut sits back there. This is where I charge my batteries. And a giant tip for you. 
if you charge batteries in your workshop, do not ever, never, ever, ever, never, ever, never, never, ever leave those batteries charging when you're not in the shop. I've seen way too many people have fires in their shop because those batteries explode if they overcharge. I'm not saying all of them do that, but I've seen it too many times on Instagram. Never leave those things charging. I was also given this little pin nailer. Uh, I don't have an air compressor, so if I ever get one of those, I've got a pin nailer. I've got this all red woodworking push stick as well. On my second shelf is where I keep my hardwoods and exotics as well as my Wumba fours. These are some just some spruce Wumba fours that I keep down there. Got a sheet of plywood stuck back there as well, as you can see. But uh, I've got, I need some project ideas, y'all. Come on, give me some project ideas. I got some blood wood, some more, some spalted tamarind, purple heart, some Chechen. I mean, I, I've got some really nice wood there to be able to build something with. Piece of zebra wood. Got some uh, chunk of walnut down there. Some white oak and then some pine two by fours and some pine and spruce off cuts down there on the bottom shelf. I really need some project ideas though for this more exotic wood. And I'm very, very open to ideas if you have any. So if we move to the southeast corner of the shop, this is where I keep these works, workbenches. If you've not seen the video on these, go check those out. These things are fantastic little workbenches, especially if you're cutting sheet goods and things are falling off on you, things like that. If you need some extra saw horses for about a hundred dollars a piece, these things are very hard to beat. They're extremely strong. I stacked 600 pounds of weight plates on them. Go check that video out. They held up perfectly fine. I bought one to begin with. I liked it so much. I went ahead and picked up another. I also have some very inexpensive uh, folding saw horses. They're plastic. These are excellent to paint on, which is why they're white, because they used to be black. And now they're painted basically a biscuit white because I use that biscuit so much. And then I have my old shop heater here in the, it's a propane heater. I don't use it a whole lot, but when it's really, really cold, I will break that thing out just to knock the chill out of the air. And once the chill's out of there, I'll turn it back off. I want to say these saw horses are like $20 a piece or $20 a set. 20 or 30 dollars a set i can't remember it's been a while since i bought some but these are very expensive they hold a lot of weight and they're perfect for painting things like that get that stuff up off the ground for you this is my delta 36 725 table saw it, they have a new model out now they don't make this version but they make the 36 725 t2 model it's got a i don't know what the upgrade is but it's just a little newer this thing has been fantastic for me it's a 600 dollars saw and for a saw in that price range, if you've priced a table saw, you know they can get really expensive. This thing has been a rock star for me. The fence stays perfectly square to the blade. The blade doesn't move unless you want it to. In other words, mitering, things like that, beveling, things like that. This thing is fantastic. I mean, as far as the table saw goes, the only thing I've done to it is I added the zero clearance insert to it that I bought online and then this handle actually broke uh, one day when I pushed down too hard, the, the, where it screws into the fence actually broke and I was able to order a replacement from Delta for, I don't know, $10 or so. And that, to, that is the only thing other than changing the blades out that I've ever done to this saw. It's got a 30 inch rip capacity. I've got a video uh, about three years ago now is how long I've had this saw. Uh, if you want to go check that out, but I've had it for a very a long time relative to how long I've been woodworking, it's been excellent. I mean, not, I don't have any complaints at all with this Delta table saw. It has plenty of power. I've cut uh, purple heart, Chechen, I've cut uh, pine, obviously, spruce. I've cut all types of wood, oak, and it has done flawless for me. This is a really good saw for 600 bucks. I highly recommend the Delta. The thing I do want to mention about the garage door, this is half inch uh, foam that I put in there. There's plenty of videos on YouTube on how to insulate a garage door. This makes a very big difference for sound a little bit, but mainly for cold. I noticed a couple of days ago, it was nine degrees outside. That's Fahrenheit, South Arkansas, that don't happen, all right? But it did a few days ago. And so it was 30 degrees in the shop in here. I was out here working out. It was 30 degrees in here, nine degrees outside. So it does help with the cold. And with the heat, it helps a little bit uh, deflect that heat but in the summertime when it's 110 degrees outside with a 90% humidity in South Arkansas, it's hot. I don't care what this stuff does. One thing to keep in mind is I've been doing this uh, this month as it's been four years since I started woodworking and none of this stuff come overnight. I've gradually gained tools and workspace and storage areas and things like that 
as I progress through the woodwork. And just keep that in mind if you're just starting out and you see these other guys that have giant shots of 10, $20,000 worth of tools, they didn't get that. Most of them, I wouldn't think, got those uh, instantly. So they don't go out and just buy those tools in one fell swoop. You gradually build up as you need the tool. And that's what I've been kind of preaching to you guys is don't compare yourself to another woodworker when you're just starting out because you're in a different place. They're four miles into this marathon when you're just at the starting line. So don't worry about what everybody else has. Uh, just look at what you've got and build with the tools that you have, the projects that you can. And as you are able to sell those projects or make money and invest in your woodworking business or your hobby, then you can take that money and build and buy extra tools that you need table saws, miter saws, planers, jointers, all that stuff. This is my little home gym set up. I love having it. It's one of the best investments I've made in this uh, garage area, especially with everything that went on last year. This is one of the first things I bought when all that stuff was going on to be unmentioned, but it's a really fantastic setup. This is a Rep Fitness PR 4000, if you're interested. So just a little bit about my home gym setup. These are more of those horse stall mats. These are actually, I've got two sheets of plywood laying uh, horizontally under there and then I've got this piece vertically on there and then the horse stall mats on each side. So it's actually two pieces of three quarter inch plywood thick platform and then I've got my uh, PR4000 power rack on there with the multi grip pull up bar. Most of you aren't interested in that but I do get a lot of questions about it and I thought I would just answer them here. This is a very nice rack. <laughs> If you like this video and you want to see what this shop looked like three years ago, you can click that box right there. It takes you back to my 2018 shop tour. This is the last one I actually did. You would be surprised and amazed at how much things changed in three years. I was when I went back and watched it. So be sure and go check that out. If you don't want to watch that one, there's another one of my favorite videos right there you can check out. Thank you for watching. If you click one of those boxes, you get that big old virtual fist bump.